In the world of muscle cars, one name often stands out as an outstanding combo of power, style, and flat-out cool. It's won my heart, 69 Camaro. Yes, it's the Camaro. And when you're talking 69 Camaro, you're talking the gold standard to many. The model that still creates excitement to this day. The 69 Camaro, I mean, that's heartbeat of America. It's probably the most popular Camaro of all time. So imagine a totally reworked 69 with the gear of year one and a build by unique performance. Can it get any better? Yes, it can. <laughs> this radical ride will be redesigned by Chip Foose and made for none other than you. Handmade and made to order, year one, unique performance, and Foos design will be turning them out with the style and power of custom one-offs. That is, if they can get the prototype made first. We're about a week and a half behind. Two automotive empires, Foos and the Camaro, coming together to reinvent the muscle car and break rules along the way. All happening here on Rides. <laughs> It's the heavy Chevy that first flashed its headlights in 1967. And before it was set loose, it was almost named Chaparral, Panther, and even Wildcat. Camaro was the perfect name. Even though before the car, it really didn't mean much. Today, it defines the classic American muscle car. And if you have one from the golden age of style meeting power, you know exactly what we're talking about. A crew of those in the know come from that auto empire known as Year One. And when they remade a Camaro in order to turn heads, they ended up turning a lot of heads. The top one at Year One is Kevin King, driving that Camaro, coming to tell us of an event. It's the union of three entities that will take a car from 1969 and make it into the hottest ride on the road today. Unique performance, chip foos, and Year One. The idea was that the companies would come together. They'll unite to make reinvented Camaros for enthusiasts, starting with a prototype to be unveiled at the Good Guys show eight weeks from now. The pressure to deliver is on. Extremely exciting partnerships are being developed here. Some of the top people in the industry who are putting an, an incredibly fascinating car out. The names associated with the cars, everyone knows that it's going to be a hit. It'll be a hit if they can get together. Year one is the parts giant from Brazelton, Georgia. The builders of unique performance are in Farmer's Branch, Texas, and designer Chip Foose draws his magic in Huntington Beach, California. This is a 20-year design project where I've been living with the ideas of what to do with this car for 20 years. The Foose inspiration is, it's, it's obvious, the guy's the hottest car designer on the planet. The designs and the creations that he comes up with are second to none. Second to none, and none of them has failed to thrill even the most well-traveled car enthusiasts. He's brought new life to old cars and given life to cars that didn't exist until he drew them. As for Camaros, Chip owns one, knowing what he wants to do as he brings new style to a 69. When we decided to do a Camaro, I've looked at it for years and years and years and always thought, you know, if I ever build another one, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. Well, we took the opportunity to do those things here. But to get the opportunity to take this dream car on the road, we need to hit the road and get to where the car will be built in Farmer's Branch, Texas. It's a region where even the livestock alongside the road know that the people here like their cars classic and fast. It's also where three men built a car movement, recreating immortal rides known as continuation cars. The trio of founders each brought unique skills to unique performance, back when their shop really was just a shop. Our story kind of started with uh, having a small garage. Doug and partners Richard Kirby and Chris Lane loved Eleanor, the Mustang from Gone in 60 Seconds. They set out to build Eleanors for enthusiasts, and by the time they got Carol Shelby involved, things got bigger than big. Our little hobby's kind of gotten out of control. Out of control, thanks to a special movie car that was co-designed by a guy named Chip Foos. We're building probably one of the most exciting muscle cars. It's my favorite. It's one of my hearts, 69 Camaro. But as brilliant as Chip's sketch is, it's a rough sketch, not detailed enough to be a complete guide. Worse yet, Foos is in California, delayed with work, full of ideas, but low on supplies. So to make a finished sketch and help the gang in Texas, Chip needs drawing gear. Unfortunately, his car is in the shop. The cab dropped me off here at the... Uh... <laughs> 
we're gonna go in here and get some crayons. Crayons, pencils, and for Chip's fluid style of working, illustration markers, if he can find any. Hey, hey, how are you? Can I'm I help good, you? how are you? Can I help you with something? Yeah, Judy. I'm looking, I'm looking for, do you have markers? Yes, I do, come on over here. I'm not sure which colors we're gonna use yet, so I'm getting a variety of different colors that I know we'll use on most of the drawings, so I'll just grab a few colors that I know I can make pretty much anything with. Actually, I'm excited to see the, uh, the car for the first time. It's always exciting to see somebody's interpretation of what you've drawn. All right, there's our markers. Markers and a hat just waiting for Chip. <laughs> do I get the uh, California Highway Patrol discount? Oh, sure you do. <laughs> now he can draw. Oh, I just love the 69 Camaro. It's a great car. A great car still being deciphered from the rough sketch at Unique. What, what color is this? Well, we, I think we're going to know that today. Um, <laughs> we're two hours ahead of, uh, ahead of Chip. Chip's uh, coming up with the colors as, as we speak, so it's going to be interesting to see that today. I've always liked the Hugger Orange. That's the ultimate Camaro Orange, but what we've done is given it a different graphic twist, so it is the unique performance Camaro rather than just another rally sport. As unique performance is known for doing the Eleanors, the Eleanor in the movie was this charcoal with the with the you know the gray tone with the charcoal stripes. Well, we're not copying a movie car now. We're actually just building somebody's dream car. Like the Eleanor cars, this Camaro will be made for consumers, put into a limited production run, built by Unique, designed by Chip with parts from year one. The rides will be made to order for Camaro loving enthusiasts. One of the difficulties will be that round marker light. There's not a lot of room on the front bumper to get that in there, so that's something that we need to get Chip's involvement in. The way I generally will look at a car is what did the original designer intend for it to be? And uh, what I like to do is try and enhance the lines. I noticed the uh, exhaust cutouts, where they're positioned on this drawing anyway, the rear fuel tank would mark. When you're building somebody's dream car, the ultimate thing is to let them decide what they want and what the package is going to be. So not only is the color an option, but you've got power plant options, you've got stereo options, you're going to have leather options. So it's you're coming in, like I said earlier, and you're building your own dream car. What, what about this grill? Is this a painted stock in it, or is that all custom? Well, we're, we're going to have to play around with that. It's fun to draw all these things up. Then, then to make it uh, right. roadworthy is, an, is yep. the second challenge. It's a challenge starting in the unique performance boneyard, where they have rows of Mustangs, as well as many 69 Camaros for this groundbreaking project combining unique, year one, and Foos design. Even without that completed sketch, the guys will start tearing apart old Camaros to begin work on the prototype, a prototype debuting at the Good Guys show eight weeks from now. Like the Eleanor cars, the Camaro will be basically 99% new, with all that's new starting under the hood. We're going to try to tuck it in tight. Tuck it in tight and low. low. Let's go down and look at the fuel system. So as the bosses go over the fuel system, the builders have their way with the soon-to-transform Camaro. Quickly, they see that this ride has already had a transformation. Well, as you can see under the car, at some point, this car looks like it was a four-speed car. Something like that would not be missed by photographer and car encyclopedia Scott Killeen, here to document all this for his Build Book. Build Book is one magazine, the whole car from start to finish. My first Build Book was Joe Rogan's 1970 Cuda built by Rad Rides. That Cuda was groundbreaking, and Scott sees the same importance in this car. I'm looking for the most influential car of this year. I need something that makes its mark and is so influenced on the industry, the industry has changed. And that's what I see is gonna happen with this Foos design car. But before it can be influential, it has to be built. So as new gear is selected and the old Camaro comes apart, expectations have started due to who's committed to this project. As work begins, they know they have to start without Chip's finished sketch. With only eight weeks to finish, Unique, Year One, and Foos have their work cut out for them. It's a daunting notion, considering this is where they're starting. Yeah. 
It's seen better days, man. A lot better days. But better days are ahead. Looks like somebody's doing, trying to do some body work. Yeah, trying to be a body professional and shoving pins through it, trying to pull it out themselves. You better leave it to the professionals, I guess. Meanwhile, unique builders are at the mule car, fitting new parts. This is our 69 mule car, which is kind of a fit car. We kind of use this one to, to mock up our suspension. This will be the final fit on the car to make sure everything lines up properly. And the year one guys are figuring out Chip's grill. Well, what we're doing is trying to come up with a kind of a prototype grill, what we want the, the grill to semi look like. From the grill back to the guys at the Camaro, they know the only remedy for an impossible quarter panel is to lose it, something they've done countless times on their Mustang projects. This is like a normal day for me. Sometimes you just got to use a little persuasion. You sure are making a lot of movement hey, over hey, there. Hey, 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 That's all there is to that. Back under the mule car with the gang from Unique, new gear is gearing up to go on for a fit. It'll be Unique Performance Innovation that'll have this car track worthy. The ride height is adjusted right here on the spinner, spinner nut where you can adjust the ride height up or down on the car. It, this right here is basically built off of race car technology. As they continue with the grill, they read the clues from Chip's rough sketch, especially around the folding headlight covers. We're uh, basically rebuilding the headlight doors to match the, the grill. On, on his drawing, I noticed that that the, the, the chrome parts on his drawing tapered from being wider in the center, tapered down to a lot smaller on the ends. And, that's one thing that I'm concerned about. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to want to keep. We'll just have him take a look at it and see what he thinks. Today, they tackled a lot of work that has some of the guys here going a bit crazy, even for them. Like a champ, huh? Super. Appreciate you, huh? Do you have my persuasion tool out there? Hey, yeah, go. Yeah. Man, I am losing my mind. Uh, on the Camaros, there's a marker light here, and in Chip's design, he decided to take these out. So I made a little template, cut me out a little piece of sheet metal, stitch it up a little bit at a time. So much rides on a big launch at the Good Guys Show, where enthusiasts will learn they can order a Foos-designed Camaro. With that coming soon, it's great to see gear fit on the mule car, with progress on the exhaust tips and the fuel tank. That's nice looking. Very nice looking. Yes, it looks like everyone knows what they're doing. Even a key player here at Unique, Tiny Bobby, a joker who knows a thing or two about stealing a little credit. Welcome back to Nick Performance. Thought I'd draw something on the wall. See what you think. This is gonna be our new project, 69 Camaro. I believe it's designed by some guy named Chip. I don't know who that is. I should've gotten the credit. I tell you, Bobby Sign, what? He's a character, very colorful character. A character hungry for humor. Very important for a fat guy to have a good grill. Are you making another part of the grill? Yeah, we're taking it. This is gonna be the, for the small fillet. Can you make it a little bit bigger? There's a lot we, we, we can say about Bobby. Um, Here we are at our mule. Now, to be honest with you, if this is going to be my car, it needs to be more like a Clyde sale. We have our unique performance custom rear end. And by the way, who wouldn't want a new rear end? I sure as hell need one. Who is this chip guy I got to meet? I, I got to meet this guy. He's taking all the credit for me. Blah, blah. <laughs> but we got to meet this chip guy. I believe he's very important in this process. With all jokes aside, as Bobby goes to lunch, Doug Hasty flies out days later to see Chip at Five Axis, the Southern California prototype mecca where they will make the body mods using a special Camaro as a base car. Doug found this old ratty Camaro, <laughs> sent it up to me to start making new pieces. Actually, this is my personal Camaro. With new fixtures, Chip wants to stylize the car. I thought that both front and rear bumpers were really boxy. So I 
basically I just want to kind of clean those up, but drop them down a little bit and, and try and soften the cars just with the bumper faces. And when it comes to side rocker panels, it's a design as simple as cutting cardboard and utilizing 16 gauge sheet metal. It only takes Chip a couple of steps and soon it's the quickest creation of rockers ever seen. See that? Look like underneath, that. it bolts right up to the flange. And it's a removable piece. That is sweet. No welding. Over at r and js they quickly make the panels. This is a section of what the existing car is. So when it lays up against that, we can put a bolt in it. That gets bolted to the bottom of the rocker. Then the new part will just hang on it, drop back underneath, just bolts right onto the car. You can't do this with every car. If the car had a lot of shape in it, you couldn't build a rocker this way. So we got lucky. Well, my dad taught me as a lazy man's a smart man. So I go about this the lazy way. <laughs> I gotta say, man, I'm a big fan of Hugger Orange. Yeah. As soon as the car is ready for paint, we'll see how good Kevin is as he hits the ride with Hugger Orange. Well, obviously the biggest challenge of these cars is the body. You know, we're taking a 40-year-old body and trying to put it into the condition like you see on the, the end of the assembly line. That's, that's actually the biggest challenge because, you know, you have so many people that look at these cars and, and you get all kinds of opinions of these cars. And uh, I think a lot of individuals don't realize how much time and effort it takes to get a car to the, to the point where you see on the end of this assembly line. It's just very difficult. And uh, the body work and the paint work is the, is the main issue because that's what people see. They don't really realize what else is in the car. They just see what they see in front of them. And, and that's a challenge. We do have some other projects coming up. I think with Chip, we've got one coming up or two cars with him, I believe. And uh, Doug and I have got some other things in the work. For some of these other people that we do these cars for, there, I have a gentleman that we're going to do a CUDA for. And, We've got some other cars that we're going to do for them because they see the type of work that we do. And there's just not a lot of companies around that will take things in like this. There's not a lot of people around with the skills that can do it. Kevin, or my guy that paints, as you see, he, uh, he was actually one of the first people that I hired under Unique Performance. I can't, he brought, came from uh, Wild Tech, and you know, he, you know, he's like a young kid, he's like anything, he was nervous and I had to baby him along a little bit and paint a few cars and hold his hand and he's become a real good painter now. It's that favorite color of 69 Camaros they're mixing at Unique Performance. And I was hoping to do It's a shade lighter on right, that. Right, right. Very much, I didn't really realize you were into the oh, yeah. artistic oh, side absolutely. of things absolutely. as much as you are. Absolutely. It's finally out of the body shop. Time to color up a Camaro here in the state-of-the-art facilities of unique performance. The black areas will be hit first, and once it's all shook up, that hugger orange will go on the ride. Chip knows the importance of the right color. No matter what you've done in the beginning and to build stuff, it's how that thing appears and what the paint looks like. That's what everybody's looking at, and that can't be wrong. So Kevin's about to spray the car, and we're kind of interpreting the picture to determine exactly where the, the lines of the hood stripe's going to come. Phil has a vibe on Chip's plan. Even though it looks different side to side here, I, I believe what he's doing is trying to match this up with the, the grill and then bringing that line back on down to the balance. Phil's a designer who can decipher designs. I would probably measure the width of the grill and make the, stri the stripe that width. So as classic colors hit a classic car, the clock ticks on. They can't wait for Foos. The deadline forces paint to fly. They'll have to cross their fingers regarding Chip's approval, making a new 69 Camaro. To bring this old car into the forefront of technology is really a cool thing. And it will really be a cool thing when everyone can finally get together in the same room and finally get this project finalized. Still, the launching of this innovative Camaro is just seven weeks from now at the Good Guys Show in Columbus, Ohio.
That's why the guys from Unique in year one started with a Foose sketch, but without Foose. The car has to get done in time. So tension is high until Chip's visit. Plus, Doug Hasty has to leave for a car auction. That being the case, Doug's guys at Unique decide to have some fun. Today is April 1st, and for Doug Hasty, we're going to play a little April Fool's joke. Hello. Hey, Doug, this is Greg. Hey, buddy, what's going on? Hey, buddy, uh, Chip Foose just walked in. Hey, no way. Uh, yeah, he's over there by the car, marking it up, looking at it. Uh, hadn't said anything to hardly anybody. What should I do? Oh, man. Well, go out and see what he wants. Uh, Doug, I just come in here. I was out there talking to him. He's concerned about the color, the striping, and the locations of the exhaust tips and reverse lights. Well, those are some issues, guys. <laughs> hey, Doug, I don't know if he's unhappy or, or, or what it is, but the, the front and rear uh, fascia of the car, he just wants to completely change it. Oh, man. So, hey, Doug. Yeah. Hey, April Fool, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys have way too much fun. <laughs> okay, enough fun. Time to get back to work and hook up that Camaro with a lot of new parts. A deadline is a deadline. And even without Doug or Chip around, that Chevy needs to get done. The main body sits there. But the real business of the moment is power, starring a 572 Chevy engine. It's a new motor going on top of all new gear. And once it's running, it'll set new speed records for any part of the car that was actually born in 1969. The 572 is uh, GM's latest crate motor. It's uh, 572 cubic inches, of course. It's uh, 620 horsepower with the 9.6 to 1 compression. And I believe it's in the 700 range with the 12 to 1 compression motor. When we built the headers, we ended up using a 2-inch primary tube, 38-inch primary tube length into a 3-inch collector. And we were, we're thinking is with the, a little bit smaller tube that it would help with drivability and low-end torque while you're driving it. And whenever we're doing the header bolts or anything and we're going into the aluminum heads, we usually try and use a wrench as opposed to any type of pneumatic tool just so we don't take a chance of stripping all the bolts out. And that way we know we got them tight, but not too tight. Those headers are a thing of beauty, looking ready to race even though there's no car around the engine. This work goes on as those April Foolers in the office focus on a different bit of business. Today, a rare special edition unique performance ride is up for auction. The crew here monitors the bidding online, and the worldwide buzz is that the car should go for a pretty penny. We're watching the uh Barrett Jackson auction on, on the internet, and we're waiting for our uh, 67 convertible to come up on auction. Uh, we're just waiting and waiting. The bidding seems to be going on. So as they wait for that final bid, the work continues on the Camaro a few doors away. That's a uh, contact primer so that uh, you won't come ejecting out of the car. Once it sticks down, it's going to be stuck. New glass is followed by new everything. Big, shiny gear that will have the Camaro running and handling like a race car. It's unique performance taking all they've learned with their Mustangs and applying it to one of the most popular GM models ever made. A Chevy destined to be a winner with collectors and drivers alike. The design of the car is that of a one-off, but of course this won't be an actual one-off. It's a challenge recognized by an automotive expert like Kevin King. The biggest challenge that we've had so far with a designer like Chip, just to take that keen eye and say, okay, if we're gonna put that to mass production, you sometimes gotta look at not making things one off. These cars are gonna be produced in the neighborhood of 500 units. So we have to kind of interpret what he wants the car to look like and then mold that into a makeable piece and not have to make 500 one-off pieces each time you build a car. And every time they build a car here at Unique, this is where they get their parts, right here in the shop. Okay, this is for exhaust systems. Let's say I'm ordering, because we order 25 at a time. Go over here and put my little note, and I just print it out. That's it, I just ordered 25 exhaust systems. Nothing to it. All right, Lori, I need an accelerator pedal, please. Okay, I can do that. 
There you go, babe. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> Back with the bidding, they wait for news. Remembering the first production car from Unique went at auction for a cool 180,000. We're hoping 180 plus. We're almost there. <laughs> They're teasing us. They're teasing them as the guys in the shop begin construction on the Camaro's roll cage. This will give the rebuilt body the support it needs, especially with additions like race car suspension and a roaring 572 engine. Elsewhere, the activity of the moment is the customizing of the central gauge panel. A balancing act modernizes some areas and retains a classic feel on other regions of the appliance. It's an exercise best explained with a look at the modified panel. This is basically a stock air conditioner control panel, but it's adapted to a new age air conditioner unit. They're adapting a lot of things, as a car built in the 60s finds itself receiving every bit of major automotive technology developed within the last three and a half decades. With this ride getting better handling, improved steering, greater comfort, and of course, bigger power. Back in the office, this is getting painful. <laughs> yeah. The wait goes on, with the crew eager to see what the final bid will be on that rare Shelby convertible from Unique Performance. Hello. At Unique Performance, they wait for news to know the top bid on a rare Shelby convertible from their shop. We're watching the uh, Barrett Jackson auction on, on the internet, and we're waiting for our uh, 67 convertible to come up on auction. Uh, we're just waiting and waiting. The bidding seems to be going on. The number will directly impact the profile of this company. Hello? Hey. Yeah, I told you like 600. Oh, wait a minute. This ain't April Fool's, is it? Okay. $550,800. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bobby, they didn't pay enough for it. <laughs> As we understand, on a public sale, it's a record uh, to the tune of over $200,000 record. <laughs> So with a Shelby convertible making that kind of scratch, it's time to check out a Foose convertible for this man. I'm the publisher of the DuPont Registry, a buyer's gallery of fine automobiles. Listen to that. I'm sitting in the shell of a Camaro, about to be reborn into a Chip Foose design, Doug Hasty monster. A Tom DuPont with the DuPont Registry, he will get officially serial number one of the 69 convertible. This is the first time I've seen it. This isn't much here. There's no front end on it at all. You can see what the rest of it looks like. It's not pretty, but it will be. This is important right here, ASAP. You know, it's hard to get excited about a rusty old piece of metal here, but uh, you look around the rest of the shop and you know what's going on. This is gonna be a very exciting deal here. I'm coming back two or three times to see, watch this baby get born. We're working on the color, but we're gonna stay away from this color. People like Chip Foose, who are the designers of, of today that in the future are going to produce the, uh, the Duesenberg boat tail speedster that was a million dollar car a few years ago. This could be a million dollar car someday. Back in California, Chip and Tom go over the details of the restyled convertible. You know what kind of colors you like? I don't know, Chip. I don't really want to do black. Okay. Some, some thought on the green has some potential, but you know, red is such a strong car color for a convertible. Together, Chip and Tom know every color combination ever to go on a car. I'm thinking of a pinstripe. I'd probably get into, into almost a little bit of a green in the silver, and then more so here, just getting a little darker and keeping those mint tones in there. It's narrowed down. And maybe a little bit, a little bit darker top. a little better. 
think that's pretty good. I like that. I mean, your choices here are really terrific. I mean, how are you going to decide, Shelby or Foose? Maybe I'll have to get both. If Tom wants both, he could start with this Super Snake, a car, like all rides here, that needs a test run before they're completed. After all this mess is done, it needs about 100 miles put on the car. You know, we do a lot of testing, crazy things like going from New York to LA in six days and really putting these cars through the, the, the paces. Hey, it's a lousy job, but someone's got to do it. Of course, this same procedure will soon take place with Camaros here at Unique, the place that put itself on the map by coming up with a magic combination. They figured out how to make this car new, classic Shelby, and from the film Gone in 60 Seconds, all at the same time. On top of that, it has to run perfectly, putting itself on the market as one of the top performance machines money can buy. This, uh, what we're driving now is the Super Snake. It's an Eleanor car. It's a supercharged big block, all aluminum, and uh, it's a real hot rod. It's all muscle. And of course, the rides here aren't just road tested, they're also dyno tested, with no shocked faces as every car blows the numbers off the gauges. The staff here is a car crazy pack of gearheads. So once they've tested every car on the property, they have to find another ride to dyno. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Hey, go. Hey. Now, if the numbers are bad, they might take the name of Unique Performance off that poor cart. Yeah, look at it down here. This is it compared to the, to the Mustang. <laughs> The, the Camaro is going to be the best of both. I think uh, you're going to have a little smoother, um, you know, Saturday Night Cruiser. And uh, um, I think in performance, it's going to be right along with, you know, our performance car, uh, Mustang, or better. He might be right, but first they have to make it. But before they get back to it, there's still a lot of racing around here, as they take more than just the Super Snakes out on the road. And just when this gang thinks they've seen it all when it comes to Shelby's, a very rare car arrives, one that the gang from Unique can truly appreciate. In fact, it's not just Mustang fiends that will flip over this guest. If you're into rides with true collector's value, this car will leave you speechless. My name is Christian Briggs, a collectibles dealer. A 1965 Shelby Mustang GT 350R. Uh, it's uh, number 102. It's one of the two original factory team cars driven by Bob Johnson. It's one of the cars that started it all. A ride with enough history to be more valuable today than it was back in 65. It's the kind of elusive treasure that makes everyone stop and ask, where in the world did you get that? Well, I found the car uh, through a friend of mine who actually deals in the vintage cars. And one day it came up available. It needed full restoration. And uh, he called me and said, listen, I'm going to get it restored. We'll do a turnkey deal on it. And, uh, and then when it's done, you can buy the car. But we'll cut a deal now. He cut a deal, and now he has one of the rarest Mustangs on the road, a car that probably went up in value even more thanks to that recent auction of the Shelby convertible. With that latest car selling, you know, within the last two weeks at the Barrett sale in Palm Beach for 550000 for the street car, you got to assume it's worth several million now. I guess it's a seller's market, but certainly above two million now at this level. Above two million. And Christian could probably see more in the years to come. That is, of course, if he keeps it in this present flawless state. Christian followed that recent Barrett auction, tabulating just what it might mean to the future of his rare Shelby. The 68 car brought what it did, the streetcar convertible, uh, brought 550,000. Um, yeah, the, the shivers were going and the Excitement levels were rising because having three of the three different Shelby's, this again being the most prominent one, uh, you know that uh, they always say all boats rise with the tide, and the tide just went a lot higher. So you know now the guesswork is okay. What are the, even the extra rare comp cars? This being a, a factory uh, Shelby team competition car, and uh, being a uh, car that was campaigned for two years and had so many victories. 
The melding of the classic Mustang and Shelby's world of racing resulted in a handful of cars that are sought after today. For many, their value goes beyond dollars. You know, cars like this can't have values when you're going to keep them and you collect them and you love them. Uh, I'm going to race this car in Vintage Series uh, over the next several years and, and watch the market you know, continue to go up. And uh, outside Enzo Ferrari, I think Kel Shelby is the, uh, the biggest thing to happen to uh, race cars and street cars ever, certainly in this country. Years before the Mustang was born, Ford had a different sort of ride on the road. And this particular Ford means a lot to Doug here at Unique. Well, that, that car belongs to a, a partner of mine. Um, it, it's a car that, uh, it's a 34 Ford that was a running driving car and we had to get off in there and tweak it a little bit, uh, change it up to, to what we thought at the time was, was what we wanted to do. Uh, and it kind of got caught in crossfire. And uh, we tried to keep the cover on that car. But we took the cover off so we could see Doug's pet project, a car he swears will be restored one day. The car signifies the beginning of, of, of what Unique's all about. And at uh, some point in time, we're going to complete that car. But uh, so many other projects has, have kind of taken uh, the front line on what we do. And, and it's one day we'll get to it. They'll get to it, but not before the Camaro is finished. Work continues on the Camaro as the crew tackles all those things you rarely think about. Brackets, mounts, braces, and utility plates. On this car, the odds are that much of it will need to be handcrafted, gear going into every area of the ride. Today's headline, the headliner goes in. You really should do this in a well-ventilated area. Headliners in the new cars, they're all glued up there. The new headliners last five to 10 years. This headliner, if it's put in properly, you can get 20 years out of it easy. This is a snap for Bill. Well, it's supposed to snap into. My family's been in the automotive upholstery business since 1955. My grandmother and grandfather passed away and my mom and my uncle ran it for years and uh, I took over. But I've worked there since I was 15. I don't, I don't know how to do anything else. So it's headliner in, and the clock keeps ticking. Well, in two weeks, we've got to take this 572 from a carbureted big block to um, fuel injected. It's not on the ground yet. Well, it's not even rolling yet. We got our hands full for the next two weeks, without a doubt. It's going to be mad. Serious, serious. Overtime, lack of sleep, no food. It will be insane. And to really put excitement into the mix, here goes. Chip Foose really is coming this week. And everyone's want for perfection delays matters here at Unique. Well, we're, we're about a week and a half behind. <laughs> I'm being nice. A lot will change when Chip gets here, and we'll see how much further <laughs> behind we're going to be when Chip gets here. With Foose's arrival, many are concerned about Chip wanting to redo parts of the car at this late stage. They've come a long way, but it still needs work. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure, make heads or tails out of this. Heads, tails, and a lot of other gear is still missing as well. We're still waiting on the uh, Hogan intake uh, fuel injection management system that, that will be put on the car. It hasn't uh, made it here yet. A uh, little bit nervous about, about that. There's a lot to be unsettled over, including a new door gap problem. That later appears solved as the crew discovers why the car has recently changed a bit of its shape here and there. It seems that a ride on jack stands is different than the same car with all four tires on the ground. Earlier when they took the wheels off of the car and they jacked it up, put it on jack stands, it dropped the center of the car, and now we have to put the wheels and tires back on it to get the door gaps and everything right. Well, the car's soon down and the gear goes on, looking more like a completed ride with every added part. Piece by piece, it's progress, but still, there's a lot left to do. And it's all those presently incomplete tasks that have everyone on pins and needles. They're nervous about a lot until Foose fused the car, because Chip is the kind of designer who can see what's wrong with a perfect looking ride. As this day of work progresses, a lot gets done. But still, 
nobody can shake the anticipation of the designer's arrival. It's anticipation shared by Doug Hasty. Over the next couple of days, as the car comes together, there are some decisions. One, in Chip's involvement in the car, uh, you know, ultimately it, it will bear his name, and uh, so we'll have to address that. But first, Chip will have to address the car tomorrow. And that's when his plane lands, with a designer eager to size up a Camaro. I'm anxious to see the car, see the stance, you know, the wheels and tires and the motor, and uh, just more than even that, let's get in and go for a ride. There's some last minute cleaning and fine tuning by some of the big guns from both camps, and just in time, because before the Camaro can even say cheese, Chip is here to get a look at the big picture. Chip sports a look that his staff at Foos Design know well. It's a poker face that can either mean all is well or why don't we try this over again? He'll, he'll start uh, taking tape out probably in magic markers and marking things up. We may be unbolting a car and starting back over. If his goal is to reduce a group of grown men into a mass of trembling jello, he's doing one fantastic and thorough job. I love it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's looking really cool. So Foose seems happy, and that makes the team here more than happy. Uh, well, what we're doing is going through the car for the first time with Chip and seeing what he thinks about it, and so far, so good. I like this. That, that looks really cool. That looks pretty good. I like that. No, man, I'm really disappointed because I was planning on changing stuff. So things. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm real happy. One small issue is the look of the sound system. I like stereo systems that, that go away. Okay. Sound that's good, that's the first product that'll date a car. You're building the car, not the drawing. I think you've done well. Can't wait to see it outside. I'd like to see that chrome. Okay. On there. See what it looks like. So you like the chrome instead of the black? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, I'd have bet 50 bucks you'd have won it the other way around. I lost that one. I think much like these Eleanor cars that Unique's been offering, that, that we now have a Camaro that I think is going to sort of change the way people look at, at doing cars. Like Chip's art, the movement this ride represents is both subtle and powerful, opening the door for limited production customs stylized by designers like Foos. We're honored to have the people involved like your one with Kevin King, but Chip Foos especially. You've got the top car designer in the world who's going to put his fingerprints all over this project. Well, now that the car has met with approval from the designer, there will be a few more days of work remaining here in Farmer's Branch, Texas. Soon it will be time to leave the Lone Star State to see how the car will be received at its debut at the Good Guys Show in Columbus, Ohio. Foos, Year One, and Unique Performance came to Texas to make a classic ride classic all over again, with plans to build the cars in a limited production run. For those in search of the perfect Camaro, their search just might be over, and once final touches like the seats are addressed, Ohio is just one step closer. The hour arrives for that high-rise Hogan manifold to find its home atop the engine. And now, it's time for this creation to discover Columbus. It's a car party with guys who we hear are pretty good guys. And for a better definition of it all, it's time to check in with a guy who knows how good this gathering really is. My name is Mark Metters, and I'm Senior Vice President of the Good Guys Rodney Custom Association. It is the largest motorsports association in the United States of America with over 60,000 members strong. Uh, we do 22 events in 14 states for hot rods, car, car people, car things, everything for everybody. It's the place you want to be if you're seriously into cars. And just when we become quite dizzy by it all, one wise man brings us back to earth. So hey, Kevin King, just where are we again? Hello? Columbus, Ohio at the Good Guys Nationals. I'm here with Year One Unique Performance and Chip Foose. We're unveiling the 69 Camaro tonight. I think it's awesome. Really good color, lots of good styling cues. I think the customers are going to dig it, and I'm really excited about it. 
Right now, the crowd is excited about two things. The show is about to unveil the Camaro, and there are lines of people who want an autograph, drawing, or handshake from Chip Foose. Where is he now? So you see something like this if you go follow a, a movie star or a rock star or somebody like that around because he signed so many autographs. And uh, man, he's a gentleman about it too. Chip Foose, young, innovative, top-notch builder, builds some very, very cool stuff. Whatever he touches seems to turn into gold. If things couldn't get better for Chip Foose and our team, they do. As the Good Guys show already chooses their Camaro as the giveaway vehicle for next year's event. It's an honor that warms the cockles of Kevin King and Doug Hasty. I think it turned out very well. We were very happy. Uh, I, was, I was excited by it. And, uh, you know, we've been busting, working around the clock, you know, to be able to be part of this event and to make it the good guys giveaway vehicle yep. uh, for 2006 is, is pretty awesome. It's awesome, but as we've been saying all along, it's the Chevy Camaro that is truly awesome. It's one of the most popular cars ever created, and if you want to see some cool ones, they are here. They're choosing Street Rod of the Year here today, and to nobody's surprise, two of the finalists are Camaros. Let's check in with those car owners and get the full lowdown on their rides. What are you driving again? 69 Camaro, uh, 502 big block, twin paradigm blowers, fuel injected, homemade sheet metal manifold. And has he heard about the Foose Camaro? Uh, I got a pretty good idea. I've heard a lot about it. I know Chip that has a lot to do it or built it. And and I heard a lot of rumors. I think I've seen a picture of it on the side of a big semi about there, but we'll see, I guess. And this guy knows all about customizing a Camaro. It's a black 69 Camaro. Uh, it's got a six-speed transmission. It's got a 454 in it. First year I've ever been here. I'm very excited. And has he heard of the new prototype? Yeah, I'm excited to see it. Uh, it's gonna be nice, I'm sure. So it seems that everyone has heard about the new 69 Camaro. With all that awareness, there's only one thing left to do, reveal the ride. The full population of the event gathers, ready to see what year one unique performance and Chip Foose have done. They're bringing the past into the future of custom car building, about to present a classic dream ride that can run on today's modern roadways. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for us to unveil And as the cover comes off, a real thing of beauty is revealed. A Camaro that reminds you why so many are crazy about this model. The crowd has the man who redesigned the ride signing more autographs. And all around the show, everyone seems to be in love with this car. Everyone in this big crowd. Big crowds, big crowds. It came together with parts and passion from Georgia, a build in Texas, a designer from California, and a 35-year-old Chevy that first sprang from a factory in Michigan. It's good to see it finally all in one piece. I know that it's a work in progress and we're gonna adjust a couple things before we go to production, but uh, all in all, it's 98% there. I'm very, very happy and uh, I think we'll have a successful car. So three and a half decades after its birth, a Camaro is totally reborn. They will be new 69 Camaros. One day we'll look back at a time when only pro hobbyists or guys with the serious dough to commission a custom build could get a rebuilt classic at a fully new and fully state-of-the-art level. See, thanks to a ride like this, everything old isn't just new again, it's also cool again.